I was actually surf casting this very beach that I'm standing on just 24 hours ago. One inch shy of being a keeper, so let's let him go real quick. Oh my God, they're just mega. Oh, they're bass. And while I was surf casting yesterday, I was so intrigued at what I saw just in inches of water right by my feet that I decided not just to go back out and try it again in the afternoon, but after that attempt failed, I decided to have an unbearable night's sleep in my car in 80 degrees after a full day's worth of fishing, wake back up, come back out on the beach and try it all over again. So time check right now is around 11.30 in the morning. We just got done surf casting for about three hours, went back to my car, and got the gear you can see right behind me. And we're headed back out to the beach for the fourth, or I don't know how to do that, the fourth time within 24 hours. So I've definitely had my low moment so far during this send because it's about a three quarters of a mile walk out to this spot every single time. It's hot, I'm exhausted, haven't gotten sleep, haven't gotten any really hygienic facilities in a while. It's all about the fish guys, so. We're here, we're on the beach, it's another gorgeous day. I mean, you can't pass up these weather windows. And we're gonna be trying to do something that I have really never ever done before, which is target striped bass in the summer. So yesterday while I was surf casting, I was able to observe stripers just in maybe a foot of water max, just cruising around munching on little sand fleas in the wash. So we're gonna kind of patrol the bank right now. Look, see if we can find any stripers doing that exact same thing. And then hopefully once we find them, we'll catch some sand fleas, pitch them out there and get bit so stay tuned guys this could be an interesting day we got the bucket we got the rods we got the passion now we just need the fish you so we're just gonna watch the edge right here very carefully see if we can find any dark shapes just anywhere right there if we find the stripers we should know how to catch them so we'll find them scattered out and then get to fishing hopefully catch them so stay tuned this could be a very interesting day just saw one right there. There's one right there, guys. Just saw him right there. Maybe you can see him. The polarized glasses definitely help a lot, but 1,000% just saw a striper, so let's get up here, set up base camp, and uh, I'm very eager to get some sand fleas in the water. There's one right there. So I just threw the sunglasses over the camera for a sec. You guys should have been able to see a couple little stripers. I mean, I saw no less than 25 to 30 of them uh, yesterday. And today I saw probably a dozen just in a couple hours I was out here. So I'm gonna throw the GoPro on real quick. First things first, we gotta catch bait. We gotta get some sand fleas. So our rods are down there. I'm gonna dig in this area because these fish are very, very finicky, especially this time of year. So I don't want to scare them away, obviously, especially where my rods are. So we're going to dig over here, get a bucket full, throw the GoPro on, show you guys how we're going to do that. Stay tuned. There's another one. There's two of them right there, guys. There are so many fish. And again, we're trying to get away from our tackle so we don't spook anything. But you can see the tide's low. Yesterday when I came here, it was not the best time. We had another fish right there. We had an incoming tide. It was not optimal. We had a thousand million black flies chewing me alive in the low light. But uh, fish right there. We should be able to do a lot better today. Gotta get some crabs, of course, so. I'm just gonna start by getting a bucket right here. So we got about four little moderate sized ones in here. Nothing big. There's a lot of ways you can get these sand fleas or some people call them mole crabs. Um, my favorite way is just to dig with my hand. Another bass right there. So there we go, just got another one. And the bigger the sand flea, the better. So digging with my hands is pretty difficult. I have to say it is. I mean, just from doing this yesterday, my hands are already all cut up. They do sell nets you can use 
to kind of get down there and uh, rake them a lot easier, but <laughs> there's a little diamond jig. The hand method will have to do for now. And uh, yeah, the bigger the crab, the better. So let's get to digging, hopefully load up this bucket and then we'll uh, keep on digging while we get a couple casts out. Oh, that's a nice one right there. There's a couple more nice ones. The bucket technique is actually working really good. We're getting at least one or two nice sized ones in here. There are literally millions of them. You'll see them go out with the wash. But that's the best haul yet for sure. You just got a whole shaboing boing of them. So there we go guys, that's the haul. About a two dozen in there between all the sand and stuff. But like I said, we don't need a million of them, just enough to kind of get us started down there and uh, see if the striper is even biting. So. So let's jump into how we rig these guys and how we're actually going to fish the sand flea. So because we are fishing in such shallow water, so close to shore, we can get away with using really, really light tackle here. Got a 2500 Daiwa BG, Mojo Inshore 7.6 medium light. We got 20 pound braid on this whole setup. Normally my go-to light tackle. Um, on the braid itself, we have a sliding one and a half ounce egg sinker right here, you can see. Then we got two feet of a fluorocarbon leader from a small barrel swivel down to a little circle hook right there. Again, you gotta use circle hooks and fish from a bait for stripers. Just make sure you stick to that regulation and a little sand flea on there. So that's the whole setup. Again, I wanna stay as low key as possible. So I have the rod holder way up here by the dunes. I'm just gonna give us a pitch, maybe three or four feet off to the shore, right there on the edge of that lip and hopefully we can get it eat. So all we have to do is literally just come up here and the smallest pitch like that. There we go. Maybe five feet offshore right there in the grazing area for the stripers. There's the first rod. I'll throw it in the rod holder back here. And uh, we got another one over here we'll use too. We'll bait both these rods up. Then in the meantime, we'll just sit back, relax. Maybe scoop up some more crabs if I feel the need. But for right now, we're just going to sit back and hopefully get bit, guys. So stay tuned. So that rod over there we left alone. Just put one little sand flea on there. This guy has a slightly bigger hook. This is a 3 I believe that's a 2 -oh over there. This rod's gonna kind of be the buffet rod. We're gonna put as many sand fleas on the hook as we can. So we got four little sand fleas on the hook right there. Just as an experiment to cover up as much of the hook as possible. And uh, in a perfect world, a stripe would see this as irresistible and would just come in and absolutely whack it. So let's see if they're in that mood right now. We're obviously going to want to fish this in the rod holder as light a drag as possible so that if a fish does come and get it, it doesn't feel any resistance and he just takes it. Because again, I can't stress how, how finicky these summer stripers are. So. Let's see if we can fool at least one of them. Oh, we just got eight. We just got hit right there. We're on, we're on. We're on guys, we got one. We got one, baby. Oh, we just popped us off. We just got eight though, a thousand percent just got eight guys. It's hard to fish just with, with one broken hand, but we just got eight right there. That's how it's gonna go. That is how it's gonna go right there. Oh yeah, buddy. We like it. We like to see results. And that was a bite. Let's go, baby. 0-1, I'm more than okay with that. And that guy just ate the whole sand flea. So, just one little sand flea. <laughs> that, we could just be getting on something really awesome here, guys. I'm just gonna pitch this out a little bit. That was way too far, so dragging it a little bit. Want it right there in those little tiny waves. That's all we need. There we are, we're on. We're on, we're on. Oh my God, yeah. I just watched one swim right by and was like, what's going on? Why didn't he eat? This is why, because there's another one on it. Oh, it's so hard to fight.
All in the sand flea, baby. Got one on. Oh, they're so fun on light tackle, too. Oh, on the handicap rod. Oh, I can't even reel. Not even giant. Nice schoolie. A little schoolie. Oh, wow. He is fired up, baby. On the smorgasbord rod. Yeah, buddy. Oh, it's not a bad bass at all, dude. Nice. Nice bass, bro. Oh, hooked him perfectly, too. Yeah, buddy. Gorgeous little schoolie right there, guys. Awesome, man. Phew. On the sand flea, all right. Let's let her go. Make sure you got a good revival on these guys, guys. The temp water temperatures are a little bit warmer, so they have to take a little bit longer to revive. And she just kicked off. Voila. Yeah, buddy. One for two on the sand flea bite. Can't hold my balance. The handicap kid slays it. All jokes aside, guys, I'm stoked that we were able to get on a bite. I just got to match the conditions of what I was observing, and that's how you do it. So I will take it one for two on fish, one for two on fails to successful days or successful days out of total trips. Let's go, baby. You. That is awesome, guys. That's why they say match the hatch because. If you watched my video yesterday, which I highly recommend, you would have seen that I threw the bucktail in front of them, threw a bunch of different lures, and they were not interested in a single thing. But we put two casts out and we've hooked up both times. So when the bass are munching on bunker in the fall, or if they're chewing on cinder worms or for eating sand fleas, just gotta match that hatch and make sure you're putting the right bait out there at the right time, and your results are just gonna just gonna prove that. So let's catch a couple more. Um, we got a couple more hours in the outgoing, so I'll take it. And we also just learned that it does not matter how you bait these. You're going to get bit either way. Whether you do the smorgasbord method right here, you're going to get bit. If you do that method with the single flea, you're going to get bit. So let's pitch another cast out here. I'm definitely expecting we're going to have a little cool down period between fish because of how finicky they are. But we'll see. This right there is all we need. Oh, there's actually one right there. Come back already. Oh, there's a school just passed right over a crab. Tell me you didn't eat that, really? Just swam right over our crab. Well, that just got hit. Thought it did. This one definitely just got hit. Didn't eat it, though. I mean, that drag is friggin' smooth. What did I say? Wash them, eat it. Wash them, eat it. Sick. Man, this is awesome, dude. Wash them, eat it. Watch them swim right past this one. And he railed this one. They're just too much fun on light tackle. Catching these guys on an 11 foot rod is nothing. This is awesome. This was another smorgasbord rod. I have four crabs on here, so that's why we're gonna play from now on. Not a bad one, actually. We'll see, ah, maybe 20 something inches. Oh wow, that's actually a slop ass. Huh. Sweet. So for whatever reason, my phone got too hot, I guess, I missed that release. The GoPro also overheated and I missed most of the dialogue there, but that was a 29 inch fish, guys. Beautiful, beautiful striper. Really bigger than I thought. I mean, I thought they were like 24 inch fish. I got the tape measure out and she measured up to 29, so. Beautiful, beautiful schoolie striped bass here. Or actually slot striped bass on sand fleas. Can't beat it. So it is hot out. I mean, sucks my batteries kind of for doing that to me, but maybe time for a new GoPro soon. So stay tuned. And I guess keep running up the view so I can get one. But uh, yeah, cool. Second fish today. 
Let's get some more sand fleas out there. That guy hit on the smorgasbord yet again. So let's get him. Phew. There we are, all rigged up again. Let's get another cast out there. There we are, we're on. We're on. Wow, that's a good one. That feeling feels good. Oh wow, he's screaming. Smoke me. This guy casts right over my line, that's so cool. What a fight on light tackle. Oh wow, gorgeous, gorgeous fish. There we are guys, another plump sand flea fish. Gorgeous bass. All right, let's get a quick measurement, let her go. Say 26, 27 and a half. All right, let her go. Sweet. I don't know if there's anything to do with the rig or not, but this rod here has gotten one bite. Well, that one's had three, or the one over here, I mean. But uh, that guy caught me completely off surprise, guys. I was taking a time lapse, actually, of all this going on over here. And um, just for the sake of wrapping up the video, I hadn't had a bite in an hour when that guy hit. Uh, I mean, I hadn't had a bite in what feels like an hour, I should say. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, for, this rig is getting rocked every time, so. Um, I haven't seen a lot of fish coming through. We have a south wind now, south-southwest. Making me harder to sight these guys in the shallow water, but that could be good for us too. The fish could be a little less weary. I don't know if we have any more sand fleas left. We may have to dig through this bucket. If not, I'm gonna catch a couple more sand fleas. And you know the drill. Bomb back out there, catch some stripers. 36 hours away from the start of July. Sick. There we go, another bait headed out to the wash. If it wasn't for these black flies, it'd be a perfect day, but I have to walk back and forth nonstop. That's all I've been doing is just walking to get some breeze around my ankles so these flies stop biting me. So guys, the wind coming and switching out of the east over here, um, the bugs just got absolutely unbearable. So that actually also perfectly coincided with the end of the tide here anyway. So there's really no point in hanging around. We weren't gonna catch any fish. I was really surprised we even caught that last one because before them, we had literally nothing show up, but Overall, guys, definitely a great success today. Trying something new and having it work the first time is always something to be proud of. So I encourage you guys to get out there if you're tired of catching kingfish or sharks or whatever you, you try to catch in the summer. I mean, there's still stripers to catch. I do encourage catch and release though on these summer stripers because a lot of them are resident fish. So if you keep them, they're not gonna return in the same numbers. Yeah, guys, so thanks for tuning in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Lefty out, I guess. <laughs> See you guys in the next one. Whew. Montage. Bah.